very well. And uh, you all that a lot of listeners are going to be on this webinar, but if they have a possibility or a chance to put questions or no. Uh, actually, uh, questions and answers uh, come uh, to the chat box. They will write question and answers, and one ah. person will ask question. Not ah. everybody. Uh -huh. I see. So our professor will ask you a question, and questions will be written on the uh, co communication box, chat box. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have such an opportunity to read questions. Yes. You can see the questions as well. I see. I think Dipanthan sir. Dipanthan sir, yes. Yes, you can see the questions. Yes, Pradeep sir. I was saying that at the end when we have the question answer session, we will uh, also unmute one by one. Uh, oh. Yes, sir. It's a good one. Uh, actually, it is it is better that people write questions on the chat box. Okay, we have gone live on YouTube. I am letting in all the uh, participants now. Over to you, uh, Professor Bishwas. Oh, thank you. We can start, right? Uh, good evening to all participants. Uh, in this session, we are organizing a fantastic, wonderful session with a professor from Ukraine. And we welcome all the audience from India, from Bangladesh, from Philippines, from Portugal, from Canada. And um, uh, we welcome Professor Irina Yermakova from Ukraine uh, International Research Center for Information Technologies and uh, System, National Academy of Science of Ukraine. And we welcome uh, Vice President of uh, Academic Affairs, Far Eastern University of Philippines. We welcome uh, Mr. Deepak, uh, uh, sorry, Mr. Gomik, uh, Director of uh, Engineering School of Adamas University. We welcome all the faculty members of Adamas University. We welcome all the students of Adamas University. We welcome all the guests, professors, students, uh, from India and from outside. And it is our pri privilege to introduce honorable guest, distinguished professor, doctor of science, uh, biological, uh, bi biomedical science, Professor Irina Yarmakova from Ukraine. And uh, it is my uh, honor to know her for a pretty long time, for six years. And she has given her consent to give a talk for all our students and faculty members. The topic is modern information technologies for evaluation of health risk in extreme environment. And we got the privilege to uh, visit this university in 2015 with our chancellor, Professor Samit Rai. And um, from that time, we have uh, communications with that university. And uh, this is the first time when we are getting the live lecture from our professor from Ukraine. So uh, welcome, Professor Irina Yarmakova, to this Zoom meeting. And uh, thank you for your consent. And we wish you good time with all the audience from India and other countries. Professor so Biswas, please... yes. Professor Biswas yeah, but, uh, your sound is echoing. Can you please uh, stop two devices that is logged in into? Two devices are logged in parallelly. Mm -hmm. Can you please log out from one device? Two devices, yes. Let me see. So I hand over uh, uh, the session to Professor Yermakova. So can I begin? Yeah, you can start. Oh, thank you. So I think that any meeting have to begin from the very beginning. And my very beginning is that I am pleased to take participation in the webinar with the Adamas University. Thank you very much for invitation. 
and it is the result of our scientific agreement, which was has uh, beginning in 2015, five years ago. <clears throat> and now we had no opportunity. I am pleased to make lecture modern information technologies for the evaluation of health risk in extreme environment. My name is Irena Yermakova, uh, International Institute for Information Technologies and System, and uh, Ukraine. And our institute is uh, of National Academy of Sciences. And uh, it is very pleasant, I repeat one more, to be here. Some words about my country, Ukraine. Uh, you see, population is 42 million. Territory is the second largest country in Europe after Russia. Neighbors Russia, Belarus, Poland, Romania, and many others. And we have agriculture, industry, and you see, it's a nice country. I love my country. It's Ukraine. In Ukraine, it will be Ukraina, Ukraina. Kiev, my city, Kiev, the capital of the Ukraine. It is the main street of Kiev, Krishatik. Welcome to Kiev. Kiev is situated on the beach of great river Dnieper, and you see here is the Dnieper. And Kiev is situated on both banks, on right and on the left. About our institute, International Research and Training Center for Information Technology and System, we have a very different direction of science because you see information technology, it can be used for any kind, for different kind of uh, application and the development of method. That's why at our institute, um, a lot, many PhD students and about and three, more than three doctors of science. You see, as to the main line, the main way, broad way of our institute, of course, it is information technology. But information technology has different, you see, background, different basement. That's why our institute and our center has different directions of use information technology. The main, I'd like to say the main, of course, it is the biological and medical information technology. Not the main, but among the main. You see, uh, in, <laughs> it is very interesting photo. You see here Parimal and the, uh, the rector of your university who visited our institute. Thank you very much that it was beginning. A good beginning is half a battle. It's our director, Gritsenko Vladimir Ilyich. And here is our colleagues. That was introduction. And now, we shall begin from to the main part of webinar. As to my webinar is entitled Modern Information Technologies for Evaluation of Health Risk in Extreme Environments. We see when we speak about extreme alliance, we have to underline what kind of extreme environments we will consider. It will be the first point of webinar. 
Next, how, what kind of information technology we are going to use for prevention of health risks in extreme environments. The main, the main part of webinar will be examples of use information technology for prediction of health risk in air environment, physical activity, water environment, where we touch immersion level and when suit, and combination air and water environment. The last will be the example of protective clothing and the applications. It is, we, we shall back to the beginning of my webinar and we will talk about modern information technologies. So we shall begin. What are extreme environments? How to prevent health hazard in hot and cold environments, in dry and humid air? How to avoid health danger in water? How to work in extreme environments? And many other questions. These questions are the crucial subject of researchers and there is no final answer. And I would add the principal moment of nowadays, that global warming of planet changes climate and increases the number of extreme environmental conditions. You see, one moment, you see that a lot of people, I'd like to say the most of people live in extreme environment, but during years, they all are adapted to these extreme environments. And now global warming of planet changes these environments very quickly. And human organism has no time to adapt. That's why these extreme environments is more extreme than it can be. That's why health risk in extreme environments is the task of great importance. The task of my lecture to talk about the only one from possible approaches that can be effective tool in prevention of health risks during stay and work in extreme environments. This is modeling, mathematical modeling. It is, I'll talk about, all my lecture will be about the mathematical modeling. The main advantage of modeling is the ability to predict the dynamics of physiological processes and the associated quantitative changes that takes place in human organism in extreme environment. You see, some of extreme environment which that I have chosen for today webinar. It will be, it will be uh, environment, it will be physical activity, it will be water and it will be protective clothing, different kinds. You see, uh, my idea, the, this slide is hint, not more than hint. What, what is the mathematical model? Simply, here is, you have to, uh, to, to see, to see that human body must be approximated. Here it is approximated from cylindra uh, volumes. Then this, uh, this uh, cylindra 
has multi layers and every layer corresponds to organs or tissue it can be brain it can be uh, it can be internal organs it can be muscle it can be fat it can be skin and so on and so forth it depends what kind of approximation we decided to use for concrete for a given task. Here is body approximation in 39 compartments. What is it? It is only some equations that demonstrate that during our life we have, we consume uh, oxygen and we have co oxygen consumption that gives us the heat production. Our life is heat production that we have to delete to uh, environment. And if you don't delete or don't dissipate heat production that produces during all our life, during every moment, during every second, it will be health risk. And about this health risk, we shall talk. Here is some portion only for as an example that human organism has uh, thermoregulatory responses that try to help our organism to uh, so to defend it from extreme environment from any environment so it will be reason to say my opinion that our life it is constant struggle with environment constant struggle with environment when you uh, in this case we uh, develop mathematical models there is a lot of equations it is the system of uh, usual differential equations uh, and its order is very high depending on the concrete task we have to realize as computer simulator because we have to use this model. If we have to use this model, we, we have the possibility, uh, we have the possibility to input data man, to input activity, to input characteristics of environment. And then we get the answer. What will happen with these four input data what will happen during any time which we are going to simulate simply uh, you see the uh, the main reason of my web seminar simply not uh, to to teach you modeling but my idea is to uh, you see, to help you uh, to be interested in modeling. That's why I demonstrate everything we, that we have an interface of information platform. You see that we can input air temperature, relative humidity, air velocity. You, we can input air, uh, exercise parameters, intensity, duration start and finish active velocity heat coefficient and we can put closing what we uh, what we are interested in for different parts for different ends and then we have uh, the interface for closing the a uh, big database for characteristic of closing and you may choose and simulate this man in this environment with this activity just the same as to shoes so environment here i present you and hot environment that's um, uh, two examples dry and humid what's the difference Air temperature is the same, 40 Celsius. But here is 
modeling situation where a relative humidity, I mean air relative humidity, is 20%. What's the answer? Everything is okay. Potential ability of performance. He can go. And if you will be jungle, where it is relative humidity is much higher, it will be 80%. Caution, here is the problem. You see that blood and meat in temperature increase and it can happen. Hyperthermia, it is health risk, real health risk. And one more, dripping sweat rate. You see it during when uh, relative humidity is high, sweat, is not evaporated. If it is not evaporated, he does not help to delete heat production, which is in body. Because he simply, he is dripping, but there is no energy that is delete heat from human organism. Now physical activity. Physical activity, it's very good thing. Very good. We can't live now during quarantine. You know that it was uh, it was uh, very bad that we keep our movement. And but physical activity is specific for human organism that to perform any kind of activity, you add additional here to your body. And this here you have to dissipate in environment. And the next thing you have, you have be limited with the intensity of physical activity in combination with the characteristic of environment. You see, it's interesting slide I uh, decided to demonstrate you. It's interesting concept psychology. Environmental conditions for championships. You see Olympic Games in Rio de Janeiro, London, Beijing, and London Marathon, Berlin Marathon. Look here. Look here. Here is uh, high air temperatures, 28. Here is Rio de Janeiro. Relative humidity, 90%. And and so on and so forth. You see, in London, air is good from 8 to 14. But then Berlin Marathon, this one. But you have to understand that the same athletes take part in all of these championships. And they have not adapted to this environment. And by the way, uh, this year, it was planned Olympic Games, you know, in Tokyo in July. And it was planning the air temperature 30 Celsius. So I don't know how these athletes can participate. But the more the, uh, I begin from physical activity is intrigue, um, intrigue, uh, uh, extreme effect. Physical activity, if you uh, air temperature 40 Celsius, it's a result of modeling, of course, but you perform low intensity activity on this three watts, you see, it's like walking, well, quick walking, no problem. You see, no problem. The sweat rate is evaporated, heart rate is kept near the initial data, and modeling prediction, no danger, but except to watch water lossing because of, um, because of sweat evaporation. But if we take intensive physical activity, such as marathon running, you see that run intensity 1,050 practically and 500 watts. It's a very big, but it longs different uh, during 
during practically during three hours. You see, it's a very big intensity for human organism. And the result, we uh, simulate this situation because it is, it can be useful for organizations who are going to perform uh, championship competition and simply civil working and so on and so forth. Because he, everything depends on intensity and air environment. We, we do this modeling for this uh, this environment, uh, this intensity for a different environment. You see, then and then, and relative humidity moderate. What we see, we see catastrophical picture. It's result of modeling start here. You see, I told you that uh, marathon running long during two and more hours. And her body temperature increased to practically to 39 Celsius. During two hours, the athletes, they run with this temperature. It's ugly. And here is, uh, of course, air temperature effect on the result, but in this case, the intensity of physical activity is initial of hyperthermia. Because, uh, of course, if uh, air environment is more warmer than it increases, but the main deviation happens according to intensity. I see, it's interesting slide, you see. <laughs> uh, during the marathon running, they, as a rule, as a rule, they have to, uh, to fulfill water losses. And dehydration, it is the second health risk for them. And now I find, uh, I find the um, slide that India's women marathon runners were not given water during their competition in Rio. I don't know why, but they have lost about 3% of body weight, water losses. If water losses is more, three or more percents, it is health risk for human organism because dehydration changes all physiological process. It changes cardiovascular responses. It changes water salts exchange and so on. That's why we have two health risks, hyperthermia and dehydration. And now we leave air environment and immerse in water. I took this slide and so picked by pictures to uh, that you will know that water it differs from air environment as from the position of effect on human body catastrophically because water is more aggressive environment, more aggressive surrounding that air, than air. Why? Because of physical qualities. Because one thing that heat conductivity of water is 25, 25 times more than air. That's why all events that takes with men, they happen quicker than in air. That's why water is very uh, aggressive and extreme environment. We modeling 
we have developed model for uh, immersion, human immersion, and we model, uh, we uh, was interested in the effect of immersion level. You see, our model allow, allow us what happens there? Uh, to model immersion level. And if you see, if you input in model, immersion model, till the head, it will be such, such changes in it. If you only immerse your head, it will be these changes of body temperature and the last, but not the least. If you immerse submersion with your head, it will be catastrophically uh, change extreme effect on your organism because of hypothermia. It is the body temperature decreases catastrophically. But you see, if your head is out of water, then it is the best way from three other uh, examples. That's why our recommendation, if somebody happens to be in cold water, it has to be head out. It is the only way to keep to, to be more, less safe, uh, less uh, uh, to, to decrease danger in water. We provide one more. Uh, we, we perform a lot of uh, modeling situations, but here I took one more, which one? You see, now it is very popular wetsuit. And they are popular not only for civil people who are going to uh, swim in cold water. It is the problem for organizers of uh, uh, competition in open water. They have to give recommendation. You have to put sweat, uh, uh, wet suit or not to put. That's why we do, and um, uh, it is uh, the why uh, 14 uh, Celsius because it is the border. They they have discussion now 14 or 15 and above it will be without sweat wetsuit and uh, uh, less uh, less they have to put on wetsuit. And what is the result if you? without wetsuit in this water and the, with this activity, then your temperature is increased during your swimming because it's rather a uh, high active level for swimmers. But if you put wetsuit, you have the danger of hyperthermia, that it will be hot for swimmer and it will be not uh, comfortable for him to, to swim in these conditions. It's very interesting results. And of course, modeling can predict this situation. Air and water. Uh, air, we talked about air environment, we talked about water environment, but as a rule, very often the combination of two environments happens in our life. We took, uh, we took for demonstration the Olympic triathlon because they have swimming, they have cycling, and they have running. It's good that we have to test, to predict what happened in water, what happened with cycling and what happened with running. You see that it, uh, 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 
this Olympic triathlon, it is very, it is, you see, kind of sport for strong men. Uh, that's why, uh, but a lot of people are busy with it, take this sport as a hobby too. And you see that all, all triathlon, including two events, two events, this, this, this one, it uh, took uh, about uh, three hours. Heart rate is high. It is more the highest during swimming than cycling. It is less and running, it is much less. But you know, it is not normal about 20 beats per moment, per minute. And it happens. They take participation in this competitions. Yes, it is clear why heart rate is uh, uh, increased because it is need to increase cardiac output to perform blood flow muscles, which perform this intensive work. Uh, I took uh, one of the event cycle. You see a cycle, a specific event, this triathlon, because it's rather long, 70, 70 to 72 minutes, you see, a cycle, and with great intensity. And, uh, but it is, uh, you see, it is this temperature, it was real uh, conditions of triathlon. But um, you see, it's interesting that it compensated because of oh, sweater operation take place. But if uh, you see uh, the uh, speed of cycling is rather big, that's why a big connection. And if you have a big connection, it dissipates heat from the body of athletes. That's why it's rather compensating event of this triathlon. I underline it is modeling prediction. But to the end of this very strong competition, Olympic triathlon, it is the extra dehydration to the run event. It is about 3%. It is very big for human organism. And as, as, as a rule, you see, it is very difficult for them. But it is, we have to predict and to know what happens in this event, during swimming, in this event, and in the, during running. So all events, it is dynamic modeling, give us the results. Now we speak about protective clothing. All uh, we speak about modeling. Yes, of course, we can be protected from extreme environments by protective clothing. But protective clothing has special, special features that it uh, protects you or any professional person from extreme environment, but protective clothing as itself can be extreme too. That's a point. That's why it is very important to know in what way this protective clothing can affect on human body. Uh, we have uh, a scientific agreement with the Australia uh, Melbourne University. And you know that Australia has problem with very often fires. And the main persons there are firefighters. And to develop comfort, convenient, um, ensemble firefighter uh, clothing, it is a great problem. And they ask us, to simulate to, it was a new generation of Ansible firefighters, to simulate to 
uh, protective clothing for firefighters. Our model allows us to include other clothing and characteristics of it. You, it is here, the it is, uh, fabrics and so on. And here is the characteristics of uh, ensembles too. And you see the principal difference of this clothing in mean vapor resistance. Mean vapor resistance, it is the quality of fabric to make way for evaporation of sweat that it is produced during work in hot environment. And a result is, you see, they have principal principle difference between them. You see that in this case, in this case, all, okay, blood temperature does not increase. Mean temperature too, mean skin temperature. Heart rate is increased, but not so much. And as to skin blood flow, it just keeps the indefinite limits, which allows to work. That's why it was, uh, as to me, interesting result and real help for the uh, organization who are going to buy or to develop. And the last, it is, uh, we have uh, 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 scientific agreement with the Strasbourg University and um, it was uh, the very interesting person Victor Kandas, he is alive now, now. and we, uh, he asked us to model microclimate cooling system. What is it microclimate cooling system? It is tubes which rounded body and, uh, and the cool air is blowing through these uh, tubes and uh, cooling system to prevent from heat. And you see here too, uh, this possibility that you can inlet air temperature, inlet temperature rate, uh, relative humidity of this air they gave us all data and the input in model and the moment when it must be switched on because it doesn't mean that this microclimate cooling system works during all time. No, it works when it person is a uh, uh, danger of overheating. That's why we do this. Uh, this is characteristic of this one. And the result is, please look here. It is without microclimate cooling system, everything, blood temperature increase, means temperature is green. And here is the result with microclimate cooling system switched on. You see that there is no danger, no health risk for person. It is a military, military activity uh, that it, it is, they make work quite comfortable. Now uh, we have to back to the beginning, to the title of my webinar about the modern information technology. You see, these models, they are a lot that we developed. They have to be realized for using. It can be desktop, it can be web application, and it can be and must be, and I think it is the only way, it is mobile application. And now I, you see, I demonstrate you are the architecture of our information technology. We have a great database of input data connecting to men, characteristic physical activity, environments, and clothing. And we have server. 
that all these data are saved in server because there are a lot of examples, a lot of models, a lot of data. And we can took data from server. We have transmission from server and use this data and to demonstrate it in desktop, web, and mobile. And the last, you see now, uh, now we have uh, developed uh, two apps. This one I demonstrate you, it is the mobile health. You see your health in your hands. Yes, it's clear. It is here, it is the mobile for the prediction of possibility of physical activity with definite given distance, given duration, in given environment, as you want, you have to input all your data, which you are going to test, to predict. And then you get modeling results in your mobile. And then you'll see here the uh, thermoregulatory responses, and you'll hear the risk health. You'll hear that you, uh, this is scale, that if it will be a run, uh, red, it will be a danger, it risk health. If it will be green, it is not risk health. And you have chance to take decision to do or not to do. You may change a lot of uh, uh, environments which you want and to uh, decide and to take your decision. Models can be applied in practice to predict human physiological behavior in extreme environments, wherein giving closing and performing given activity. Information platforms with mathematical models makes possible to predict human state in the extreme environments and to avoid health risk. That's all. Thank you for attention. You see, this man now have chance to predict using model what will happen with this person who is running from marathon to essence during, you know, three hour, hours and more and to take decision to take or not to take, to do or not to do. Thank you. Uh, we can take some questions. Uh, Professor Bishwas, are you there? Yes, I am here. Yeah. <laughs> Professor, uh, Professor Yermakova, we will probably take some questions. Uh, Professor Purimal Bishwas, what do you think? We yes, sir, of course, sir. Okay. We are expecting questions from the audience. Great. Great. So, uh, to everyone, uh, please use the raise hand feature and I will unmute you one by one for your questions, please. Uh -huh, okay. <laughs> if anyone has a question, please use the raise hand feature and I will unmute. And it is also better that the person writes the question on the chat box because uh, professor can easily understand the question. No, I understand. Please, please <laughs> ask you. But uh, he, you asked me to present, to make presentation, to demonstrate slide, Parimal. No, 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 no. no. I asked the audience to write the question so that you can uh, see the question and it will be easy for you to understand the question. Uh, I see. I see. Okay, thank you.
Professor Dipanjan Banerjee, do you have a question? You yes, can sir. Unmute. Yes. Yes, sir. Mm. Uh, how do the algorithm analyzes that the body temperature is increasing or decreasing, or the or the water level inside the body is increasing or decreasing? On basis of what scenario you analyze it, sir, madam? Uh, uh, repeat once more uh, your question. How do you analyze the water level inside a body? Ah, I see. You see, it is uh, we have uh, we have um, uh, mathematical approach to divide our body to different parts and simulate uh, uh, level uh, immersion level to that part which is involved in water. You see, it is a mathematical description that allows to do it. And in the same way, the body temperature also taken care of. Sorry, one more. And in the same way, the body temperature also taken care of during some exercises or during some activities is going on. You see, we have, uh, uh, Everything depends the approximation. For example, uh, if we work with the approximation of human body from 39 compartments, we have 39 temperatures. You see, for all the for all part the compartment we have uh, temperature. Simply here, I demonstrate core temperature. It is uh, internal organ temperature. And sir, uh, how do the approximation algorithm works, madam? Uh, it is uh, the uh, uh, it is the approach. It is the approach that uh, that it is used for all who are busy with modeling. We have we have to uh, present our human body. Of course, for example, our body or oh, our head is. Uh, uh, not cylinder, but all parts as, uh, can be approximated as cylinder volume. That's the point. And all processes which we are um, uh, described, which we describe in the mathematical uh, equation, they depend on that form which we are approximated. For example, if we calculate uh, heat, heat transfer from one part to another, we have to take into consideration that we took into consideration that it is, for example, cylindra. Okay? That's the point, because it will be other physical laws. Yeah. We have yeah. another question. Yeah, yeah, Professor Banerjee, you have another question? Yeah, one little bit uh, Yeah, okay. Carry on. discussion. That is... Uh, Madam, uh, suppose during uh, during any uh, a person is running in a track, uh, he is getting sweat. So yeah. gradually, uh, due to air, uh, the sweat evaporates. Not always, not always, not always. It depends on the characteristics of environment. If you have high humidity, air humidity, as a jungle, it is it does not evaporate. It is dripping. And if it is leaping, he does not help uh, to delete heat production from body. Okay. Now, madam, I was asking if the uh, sweat evaporates, then the body temperature decreases gradually. And if the body temperature decre decreases gradually, then how do the algorithm will analyze that uh, the person is having some exercise or resting on bed because the body temperature is decreasing? No, you see that, um, thank you very much for a question. It's very interesting, really. But in fact, in fact, if you have uh, strong sweating, it means that you have intensive activity. And if you have intensive activity, heat, additional heat production is very high because, you, uh, the, because of efficiency is too small, only 20% efficiency and then all engine energy is transforming here 
That's a point. And there is no such a case that sweat evaporation can make temperature uh, low than it is. No, it's, it's impossible. Okay. Thank you, madam. Thank you, madam. Thank you. Uh, request for a question from Professor Pabo Kindu. Uh, that was very enlightening, madam. Uh, madam, uh, I would like to know, suppose a person is having some medical conditions. Say, for example, we know that uh, if a person going into heart attack or something like that situations, that person sweats too much for a certain amount of time. So, like, uh, how do we judge that uh, difference at that particular situation where the scenario is something like that? You see, uh, it's a separate task. Yes, that these person are not in open air, they are in the room. Yeah. Yes, of course, it is, we have developed, my PhD student developed model, when we have, um, uh, it's another, uh, other models, uh, among our models, when we simulate situation in room, because uh, there are other physical laws uh, which are described in modeling. Because, for example, it is the first of all quantity of people in the room, first of all, because any people to what? Two watts. And if they five, five watts in the in room, that's a point. And the, the second uh, question is that it is very important, the uh, volume of room, the uh, walls, floor, and uh, that's, uh, that's uh, to be sure, it is very important, comfortable uh, condition of this room and quantity of people in it. Okay. Uh, we have another question from Professor Tonar Das. Quantity of people in it. Sorry, one more. Quantity of people in it. Professor Das, you have a question, Tonar Das. Yes, sir. Uh, ma'am, thank you for it, uh, for this nice presentation. Uh, ma'am, I would like to ask you one question. That uh, being a researcher, what are the major areas a researcher need to study to initiate a research in this domain? <laughs> Thank you so much. Yes, but uh, as a real, I, I have graduated from the Polytechnical Institute and I'm specialist in computer, in computer technology. And then I uh, graduated additionally uh, physiology and I have to learn it to, to be modeling because you see modeling it uh, it is the the border between the uh, subject and the method you see and it is really you are right it is rather domain, different domain yes ma'am means it covers um, means majorly domains some psychology part some mathematical part as the mathematical models are including in this research domain uh, so uh, we need we need to study a uh, lots of areas for uh, yes. Yes, you're right. But as to our modeling, we are not busy with the psychological effect. We don't take into consideration it. It's it, it is special. It is special uh, part of uh, of effect of extreme environment to men. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Are there any other questions for Professor Yanmakova? From the audience. I think our session limit is going to end because uh, it will end in three minutes. I'm sorry, what? Session is going to end in three minutes. Okay. All time right. limit. Yeah, time limit is going to end. Okay. So, Professor Bishwas, would you like to uh, have the conclusive conclusion? of this yes. session. Yes, sure. Thank you. Um, actually, it is our honor to uh, uh, host today our professor from Ukraine, Professor Irina Yermakova. 
thank you professor yarmakova for your time and uh, we can see your vast knowledge in this field unfortunately uh, this science is totally new because uh, we use our dress on the basis of our personal guess guessing we we think okay this dress is good for this weather or this uh, temperature and all this uh, but without science and today you have brought science to our everyday life and it is good to know that uh, what is the body temperature what is the blood temperature what is the heart beat and uh, what is the uh, right uh, clothing right sho shoes it is good to know because it is called science and thank you for introducing us to this science which can be used not only uh, as we understood this science can be used not only in very uh, adverse situations it can be used on everyday life and uh, thank you uh, for this opportunity to listen to you and on behalf of adamas university we would like to thank you for giving your consent sharing your knowledge and we also want to request to that we continue our joint activities joint um, not only uh, lectures but joint um, research joint publications and in time to come joint um, seminars and conferences electronic conferences and uh, we would like to thank you all the audiences who joined us from philippines uh, professor quinto and from bangladesh and from ukraine professor vladimir and from other universities professors and uh, our beloved students our faculty members and mr vomik thank you for uh, your participation and your dedication and your efforts to make this event successful and i thank god for all of you and wish that god give peace during this hard time and um, energy and motivation to live together with peace and joy so uh, if somebody has something to say then please and we finish here thank you professor yarmakova from the department of computer science and engineering of the school of engineering and technology of adamas university to being to be here in the in this webinar and to give, enlighten us about all these things thank you very much on behalf thank you. of so our thank department you. dipanjan there was a question from someone here priyanka had a question but i think she is no longer wants to ask the question okay all right sorry uh, professor banerji uh, dipanjan banerji go ahead sir if you, if anyone has questions they can ask uh good evening this is mir dr mir nakinto from the philippines for eastern university this is not a question but this is just to say thank you very much for the speaker for a very comprehensive discussion and uh i really learned a lot i am not a, a per, i am a person not into math Uh, but I was able to understand fully and learned a lot from her talk. Thank you so much, and I want to thank um, Adamas University for personally inviting me to be part of this webinar. Uh, I hope that uh, there will be more uh, webinars to be conducted by uh, Adamas University, and I hope I will we will Forrester University will still be part of. this future webinar so thank you so much and uh, i would just want to say i learned a lot from tonight's talk thank you professor quinto oh. actually we had a professor from portugal today so if he is here we can listen to him professor of engineering mechanical engineering from uh portugal is there any uh, participant from portugal uh so we can finish here with your uh, permission and uh, we wish everybody uh, who is in india good night and uh, thank you 
थैंक यू वेरी मच मैम थैंक यू वेरी मच एवरी वन दिस इज शुलग्ना फ्रॉम ई सी डिपार्टमेंट थैंक यू वेरी मच ऑफ एडम यूनिवर्सिटी थैंक यू वेरी मच मैम फ्रॉम आवर डिपार्टमेंट थैंक यू सो मच फॉर सच एन इनविचिंग लेक्चर एक्चुअली दिस इज द फर्स्ट टाइम वी आर हैविंग एन एक्सपोजर टू समथिंग ऑफ दिस शॉर्ट वी वेर नॉट अवेयर ऑफ दिस थैंक यू सो मच मैम आई विल टॉक टू माई स्टूडेंट्स रिगार्डिंग दिस न्यूली एक्वायर्ड नॉलेज थैंक यू सो मच मैम थैंक यू Thank and you. please share your uh, ppt so that our students can learn from your ppt uh, yes, yes. ma'am yes yes we will explain with the help of those ppt yes you may thank you ma'am thank you so much thank you thank you ma'am from behalf of adamus university for this very very excellent presentation with full of knowledge i acquired a different knowledge in different areas so thank you very much thank you okay with that uh, uh, we'll close this uh, close this uh, webinar thanks everyone and have a good night and a good Bye. good weekend ahead good day <laughs> thank you good weekend good good